So we have a bit of a mixture tonight because of the half of you have come to do the Passover weekend. And some of the people doing the weekend, you're also going to stay next week because we're offering a transformation week. And um, the other half of the people, either they live here or they're closer living people who come sometimes here for this kind of meetings. And when you've left this place, if you leave this place with some kind of interest, some of you might even be, have a lot of interest, something might get touched inside you, which you don't really know why I'm so touched, but I'm touched. We have a huge website for the community and a huge website for me. And so if you're interested, we can keep you busy for a whole year watching all kind of amazing stuff. So when I was a bit younger, I traveled in India and I interviewed, um, I think it was 16 of the most interesting Indian masters. And my interviews are going up in the next week on YouTube. Well, half of them are going up and the other half a bit later. And these interviews will take you deeply into what this is all about. If you're interested to do more than simply meditate. Yeah? Meditator, meditation is a great beginning, but there's much, much more, you see, much, much more. So if you get, want to get some taste of what's much more, you could watch some of those interviews. I also interviewed a lot of Western masters, and I think we've already put up on YouTube six, ten, six, six or seven of the interviews have gone up on YouTube. So you can watch the whole interview, which is very beautiful because I would sit with these masters for maybe uh, an hour and a half or two hours, and they would share very deep stuff with me, you see, because I was coming to them without coming to get something. I was simply coming to meet them, give them an opportunity to talk to me, so talk to you. I didn't do it really for me. I spent my own years going to the spiritual masters. I had this terrible Osho guy, maybe you've heard of Osho, really dangerous guy, you know, probably if you were around, you know, 20 years ago in Germany, you would have read all kind of terrible stories about Osho. But they're all not, they're not really true, of course. That's what the press has to do. So you buy their newspapers. But actually he was a great guy one of the truly outstanding human beings, I would say, of the 20th century. And he's published, they publish many books, and there are also many wonderful videos of Osho. So he's a very interesting guy. I spent 15 years with him as my teacher. And then he left his body, and uh, I realized I wasn't quite cooked. So then existence introduced me to another guy, he was an 80 plus year old man living in the north of India who came to be known as Papaji. It was kind of his nickname, but the nickname became kind of his spiritual name. And he was also an incredible guy, and I spent five years with him. So I have 20 years of kind of background with these two great guys. And then I met another guy. This guy, who, if you're at all interested in changing your inner world, you better find out about this guy. He's called Ramana Mahashi. And most people who are involved in the spiritual life know that in the last years, he's the most important teacher on planet Earth. Okay? He died in 1950. So I've been a very lucky bloke because when I was your age, when I was in my 20s, I was pretty unhappy living in London. I had a good job. Occasionally I had a girlfriend. I had a nice little Volkswagen Beetle. I was doing okay, but I was completely lost inside, completely lost inside. And somehow, for whatever reason, existence picked me up and put me in Tokyo. And I spent three years in Tokyo. At that time, I worked as an architect in the daytime, and in the evenings, I taught English. And so during the time in Japan, 
I was taken to meet a man, and this man, a German man with a Japanese wife living in, in uh, Kyoto, they introduced me to Osho. And that's how I went from London to Tokyo to India. And after that, my life gradually completely changed. That's my story, but not exactly the whole story, of course. If you want to know the whole story, you can go on YouTube and you'll find my whole story is there in two different interviews. So you can look there or you can look on my website. We have a whole big section of videos. So you can, all these videos we're now putting up on YouTube are also already on my website, most of them. Okay, so there's, I don't know how many, about 40 interviews I think I did over some years. So that watching those interviews, if you want to, will give you a very deep understanding about what this is all about. People talk about a spiritual life, but uh, I wonder what they mean actually. What's the difference between spiritual life and life? Question. So what this is all about, you know, very simple, is not about meditation. Meditation is a great beginning. Some of you maybe started with yoga and then you went to meditation, so that's a good beginning. But what it's really about is something very beautiful. Because actually it's about love. Now I'll start crying because everybody thinks love is to do with finding somebody who you can love and who will love you. That's love. This is bullshit. It's not, that's not love. Most, for most people, that's a nightmare. It starts off wonderful, and then it goes for maybe one year or one month or one day, and it's wonderful in the beginning, and there's great hope. It's all going to be great. It wasn't great last time, but the next time will be great. And you do a few of those between maybe when you're 18 until you're about 35, and then you realize actually maybe this isn't the right game. Not many people realize that, of course. But anyway, the real game is to discover you are love. Very simple. Everybody sitting here is love. Your essence is love. So there's a, there's a sort of process that you can go through to discover that your essence is love. And as you go on this journey, if you want to go on this journey, you will gradually have kind of moments when you will realize something that you didn't know before. Because to discover that your essence is love, right, you have to get rid of all this fucking stuff. So if you really want to come to the deepest possible love, your fucking boring, stupid, egoistic mind has to become empty. So this process is not so easy. Because all this rubbish in here, you love it. In fact, you even think you are all that rubbish, don't you? Ha ha ha. Tragedy for humanity, actually. Tonight's Friday, right? Just nearby, we've got one of the biggest motorways in Germany. Yeah? And on Friday night, if you go and stand there, you know what's happening? Thousands of people are rushing up and down that motorway. And what are they looking for? Love. And where do they look? Inside themselves? No, 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 no. They're looking for somebody. They go to a dance, they go to a party, they go and get drunk somewhere or whatever they do. But basically they're all looking for love because they've been fed this nonsense that love depends on you finding somebody who will come and love you. And some of you are a bit older than 20, so probably you've already experienced 
this bullshit about romantic love, you know? But it's very difficult to let that go because our conditioning is so deep and so strong and everybody around you is also looking for a partner to be in love. Yeah? So to, to have the courage even to look, to have the courage to step out of that, is extremely difficult, extremely difficult. So what's rather interesting and rather, rather possible for you guys, depending on how much you're really interested, is that here, living here for 22 years, is been an average of, <clears throat> let's say, between 16 and 20 people who have gradually, gradually over the years come together as a very deeply connected community. So now you've been a few hours in the house, and you've probably met some of the people who live here, and you maybe have started to feel there is some sort of energy here which you don't normally meet. In fact, it's extremely difficult to meet the energy that exists in this house. Because this energy in this house is the result of 20 years of a group of people which has been changing, of course, but where the whole focus of this group is to come to love. So love is also energy. So this meeting is not about some more mindy stuff. I don't want to fill you up with some more mindy stuff. So this, this is a meeting about coming to understand that love is energy, and energy is your essence. It's all about energy. I heard such a sweet story tonight. You, some of you met my daughters. Quite amazing. Here's an 80-year-old man. I've got two 80-year-old daughters. Can you imagine? Super nice girl. You can meet them if you're here next week. And um, one of them, who is a bit unusual, I would say, some of you met Amelia. So she came to Ohm today, and they had a bit of a chat. And she told Ohm, you know, a few years ago, I came from one of those stars, she said. Right? Beautiful. Huh? So now we want to ask her to draw her star, you know? And she probably will. And she'll know exactly what it, all these funny things when she draws, you know? She'll know exactly what they are. Kids are so amazing. You were all kids once, you know? You were all amazing once. And now you may be a bit boring because you've been conditioned. You know? I don't know. Everybody has a different life, you know? But most of, unfortunately, most of you guys have been around too long, and so you're boring, probably. Because the society's boring, you know? Do you think the society wants you to be a crazy, creative, dancing, singing, painting person? Of course they don't. They want you to be there on Monday morning at 8 o'clock to get your computer working and to make a bit more business. That's what they want. If that's what you want, very good. But if it's not really what you want, then you can do something about it. Because I tell you a big secret, shall I? You're allowed to do whatever you want. Even in Germany, there's no rule that says you can't do what you want. I have a lovely story from my teacher, Papaji. He went to Europe, and he was in Berlin, right? He's walking down the street in Berlin, and in front of him there was somebody laughing a lot. And he was kind of touched, you know, Berlin laughing, I mean, amazing. And suddenly a police car stopped, grabbed him, put him in the police car. And he was telling his story years later, in Germany, you were not allowed to laugh. <laughs> But, of course, it's not like that, is it? You're allowed to laugh a bit. Not too much, of course, but you're allowed to laugh in Germany. And surprisingly, even in Germany, you're actually allowed to live your life exactly as you want to live it. But to do that is just about impossible. 
it requires enormous courage to live your life the way you want to. Because everywhere around you, there is some kind of pressure, you see? Well, you should be like this. You should be like that. Mummy wants you to find a nice husband. Daddy wants you to find a nice job. And it goes on and on and on. All kinds of conditionings on you. How you should be, you see? And you have no idea how you should be, do you? You don't know what you want. You don't know who you want to be. You don't know how you want to live. Because nobody ever taught you that. Nobody even discussed it with you. Did they? I don't think so. As far as I can understand, it's very rare that any daddy sits down and says, OK, darling, you know, how do you want to live your life? You see? How do you want to live your life? Did daddy ever come and talk to you like that? Probably not. Hmm? This is one of my favorite girls at the moment, because I discovered that when she was 12 or 16, we don't know exactly, she started reading spiritual books, you see. But she didn't know what to do with it. She read these books, it really touched her inside, but what to do, you know, what to do. And then I don't know how it happened. I haven't forgotten to ask her maybe, but somehow she found this community. She came to a meeting or a weekend. Maybe you came to Vipassana in the beginning. The transformation. Which one? The transformation week. Oh, okay. So she came to our transformation week, which some of you are going to do next week. And in this week, we just blew her into pieces, you see. Blew her into pieces. I have to blow all of you into pieces if you really want to change your lives, you see. Are you ready? Are you ready to have everything blown into pieces? Not many people are ready for that. You, know? you have to get rid of all the old bullshit before you can fill up some good stuff. And the best part of this good stuff is to discover that your essence is love. But not I love you. It's just love. You can feel it walking by the river. You can feel it hugging a tree. You can feel it walking in the mountains. You can feel it at a sunset. There are many different ways. You can hug a dog or pinch a cat or pull a cat's tail. Or, I don't know. There are many ways to experience this love, you see. This is our birthright. This is why we showed up on this planet. We showed up here to live in our essence. Did we show up to pay the phone bill? Did we show up on this planet to pay the rent every month? I hope not. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I'm supposed to start with a meditation. <laughs> okay, so. So uh, for the Vipassana people particularly, we'll do a meditation now. So if you could sit um, comfortably, it'll take about 10, 10 or 15 minutes. <clears throat> and once you're comfortable, you can close your eyes. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. So this is a little bit of a moment when, if you like, you can have a chat. Chat. Let's have a chat. So, so we have a microphone. So I'm going to ask now if anybody would like to share what happened during the meditation. So you have a chance just to express what it was. Maybe your head was full of a million thoughts and you never got beyond the thoughts. But I know some of you have been meditating a lot, so maybe some of you came to a very quiet, empty place. <clears throat> 
maybe. Anybody like to share what happened? We've got a microphone. <clears throat> okay. Maybe we ask this guy because he doesn't know, but he's indicating he wants to talk. <laughs> um, What's your name? My name is Samantha. You came for Vipassana? Yes. Good. Okay. Um, I think the last moments I were asleep. <laughs> you went to sleep? I fell asleep, yeah, the last okay. moments. All right. Because when the bell rang, I was like, okay, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, wandering with my mind and becoming calmer, but nothing extra extraordinary or so. But okay. it was good. Okay, then, yeah. Good. So, anybody else fall asleep? <laughs> I thought you were all meditating, but maybe you're all asleep by the end. <laughs> this guy wasn't asleep. Maybe ask him. You we weren't sleeping, were you? Have you done a lot of meditation? Uh, no, not really. Not really. No, I did. Actually, I did. Huh? Uh, but never longer than uh, 10 minutes or something. Um, you never did longer than 10 minutes? No. Uh, but you do it every day? 10 minutes? Yeah, mostly. Yeah. How many years? Two years. Three years? Yeah, okay. two years. Well, yeah. That's a lot, yeah? Yeah, but I was thinking, about, most of the time I was thinking about the stuff we were talking about uh, and if I'm on my right way. And yeah, that's what I was, what I was thinking about. Yeah. And which way are you on now? Um, meditating every day for 10 minutes. I think I'm on the right way actually. I, okay. I do things I love and uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, give me an example of the right Playing way. music on the street. What? Um, playing music on the street, for example. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. That's actually something I really don't like to speak in front of people, but yeah. Ah, right. Oh, you see. kind of forced me. <laughs> But you're sitting right in the front, you don't have to see anybody yeah. else, you see. True. We can just have our personal chat. Yeah? Yeah. And so when you say I'm on the right way, what does that mean? Playing music in the street means the right way, or something going on inside mm. you is the right way? Mm. Being we, used here to now. Have, we used to have a, a French guy living in our community. And he loved playing the harp, mm -hmm. you know, he was always playing his harp. And he used to go and play in the street, you know. Do you know why? His father used to go and play in the street. Mm -hmm. His father was a music teacher in a college. And when he had free time, he would go uh, on the street. And he used to take his son with him. So his son also then played in the street. Is that how you started playing in the street? Mm -hmm. No? No. One day you woke up and said, I'm going to play music in the street. No. No, it kind of just happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't know what to say. So you say you know that that way, which is apparently playing music in the uh, street, that's your way. Yeah? It's part of my way. Yeah. Part of your yeah. way. To okay. connect with the people. Through the music you connect with them. And through the eyes as, as well. Yeah. Okay. And? Is that it? No. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, you do know. You told me you know that yeah. it's your right way. You know? So how do you know it's the right way? Yeah. I'm not sure actually, but uh, you were talking about like these uh, bored people who are like about what adapt or oh, these boring people or people who are, are kind of adapted to uh, the um, how the society wants them to be. I uh, I think I I went out of this. Uh, Good. 
Group. I went to an art exhibition today in Cologne at the moment. They have a big inter sort of international art show. I went there today. And it was very interesting because I'd been going for probably 10 years or something. And um, the last time, last maybe two times I went there, I was I basically wasn't very interested in what I could find there. Because we have our own art gallery here, actually. No, now it's not really running for some reason. But uh, normally all these paintings you see here have been bought by the community from all the different exhibitions. So we always buy one or two paintings. So over 20 years, you know, we have all these paintings now. <clears throat> but there was something very beautiful today because when I came into the exhibition, it's a very big exhibition, I felt something has completely changed from the last two years. There was much more color, rather bright colors. And yeah, I was immediately struck, there's a, a new energy here. And then why is there a new energy here? And I would guess the new energy comes from what happened uh, in the COVID time, you know? And a lot of people went into a very sort of difficult thing because they couldn't, maybe if you're an artist, it wasn't easy to sell your paintings. So they didn't have much money and maybe they couldn't go out and really connect very much. So they were very much with themselves. So I would reckon this completely new spirit is a come from that time, basically. You see? So human life does change because we're all kind of connected. So now I maybe go back again tomorrow to have a look again because mm -hmm. uh, it was really a great exhibition. I really enjoyed it. And I even found quite a lot of stuff I liked which is a bit rare, actually. So my taste in art, you can see my taste on the walls here, you see? Mm -hmm. Nothing for the ego here, very little. Very little for the ego, you see? Look at this big painting up here on the wall, right? The woman who did that, she was a typical housewife, painter, mm -hmm. and her studio was in, a, in an old castle, and around the castle there was water. So this painting is what she saw when she looked out of the window. So there's the water, and then out of the water, of course, all kind of stuff growing, you know? Like, I don't know what they're called, but anyway, you know, stuff that grows out of the water. And she just slashed the canvas to create this black stripes, which is the, the grass or whatever was growing out of the window in the water, right? Maybe you can't really get that from that painting, but that's what it is. That was the inspiration of this painting. And you can feel when you look at this painting, if you give it a bit of time, it's very silent, it's very quiet. It's not trying to do anything very much, you know? It's not trying to grab you or show you or... And when you go to these big international exhibitions, every artist is saying, you know, here I am, you know, here I am. You know? Horrible. When you get thousands of artists all going, here I am, here I am. Who wants to watch that? This is very lovely because you can even feel amongst all these different artists, even from different countries. This is a French woman, a German woman, Russian man. Many different countries are here, but there is something where you can see that they sort of fit together, you see. Anyway. Okay, very good. Anything else? Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you, um, you were talking about um, this guy, I think, who, who left his body, you say? And what do you think where he is now? Yeah, he died in 1950. Yeah. yeah. And do you think, like, spirits, what? I mean, life, go, do you think life goes on after we um, die? Or, or our physical Well, bodies? it depends what you mean. His body doesn't go on. Yeah. But if you go but to his, his ashram, you find everybody in his ashram very connected still to him. And there are more people now going to his ashram than, than uh, 24 years ago. You know? Now in the last 24 years, every year, more and more people are caught to go to his ashram. So it's full of people now. Indian people, but also internationally, many people come there. He's not there in his body. But he's he's there. I mean, it depends what you you know what you understand. Yeah. 
Anybody else? Okay, good. You did very well. Very well. Good. Yeah. Okay. So there may be one or two people here. You can do even better than he did. You know how you can do that? You can come and sit here. Ha 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 ha. Oh, good. You see? Okay. So when you come here, you just make this microphone. You can just pull the microphone. Uh, so, yeah, very good. Okay. So I just came because... What's your name again? Nicole. Who? Nicole. Nicole. Okay. Yeah. And you're from Germany? Yes, I'm from Hamburg. Hamburg. And yeah. you don't speak so good English, yeah? Um, oh, your I mean. English is... A, did I, you look a bit like somebody I met. Oh, was I you, hope my you? English is oh. good enough. Your English is good. Okay, fine. <laughs> we have a great translator anyway. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about coming and only speaking German. We have the world's best uh, translator from English into German. Or German into English. Uh, you've been doing it already for 20 years, poor girl. Yes, and at uh, dinner time, Radja, Rada, encouraged us to come up here and sit with you because she says it's a very good experience, full of energy. Right. So I really don't know. I don't have an exactly question or something to tell, but I wanted to experience this. Okay, so just have a look around. Give yourself enough time to just look around. And as you look around, if there's somebody whose eyes seem to be inviting you, just um, make a little bit of contact with them. Maybe you come here. Is this your camera? Okay, so, okay. Well, I'd like to be a little bit less close. You know? Just bring the camera back a bit. Because I'm a bit tired. very beautiful to sit here, you see. You don't know this because you, <laughs> you think love depends on somebody loving you, you see. But what you don't know is right now there's about, I don't know, 25 people sitting here and you're all loving her. So you're not thinking, oh, I love her, of course. But you can't help it because your eyes are open and through your eyes comes the energy to her. 25 people's energy coming to her. It's nice. It's very nice. <laughs> very nice. Huh? Can you imagine why I've been doing this for 30 yes, years? Yes, I can. <laughs> Actually, I can. I've been, I've been having, you know, 25 lovers at a time for 30 <laughs> years. You know, it's bloody nice, I tell you. Usually, I don't like to sit in front of people. I no. was very afraid. Right. But, but now it's really people, nice. Yeah? yeah, very nice people. <laughs> yeah, but they're not, they're not even people, you see. You don't have to see them as people. You just see them as energy. Energy. The energy you feel. Yeah. Together, they're creating a beautiful energy field, you see? And that's just like a wave of love. And you are looking into this love, and you feel all yeah. that love, yeah? That's true. Here I do. But in other moments, if I sit in front of many people, I don't feel love. Yeah, but they, don't, they can't love because they're not open to love. They're just in, not even open in their hearts, probably, with their own family or their own kids. They don't even know how to love anybody. Yeah. You know, these people, because they've been meditating, uh, they have an openness. See? So when they look at you, they, their hearts kind of open a bit more probably because you probably smile back and then the whole thing is touching them in some way. And, and <laughs> as we go on, we'll probably carry on for another maybe even two hours because I have a lot of energy tonight, it seems. <laughs> so, I think so too. <laughs> You have a lot of energy. Yeah, but the energy, I'm, I'm sucking all the energy from all these guys, you see, the guys and girls sitting here, the same way that since you sat yeah. here, you feel this energy, yeah? yeah? So this energy is making me very energetic. Yeah, Not I the understand. only reason, but one reason. I understand this now. And I understand when I sit in front of other people and I don't feel good, I always thought it's me. Yeah, but maybe, exactly. You thought it maybe, was you, but yeah. it was them. Not these ones, yeah. but another ones, you see. So that's great. 
So as you go through your day, your normal day, where you live in Cologne or? No, in Hamburg. Oh, in Hamburg, okay. So when you go around your day in Hamburg, you know, it's yeah. probably raining, of course. No, it's not. <laughs> I used to regularly, I used to travel in Germany a lot from town to town. And whenever I came to Hamburg, it was always raining. And actually, Hamburg seems to be the closest city to England. To right? London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I no, but it's not. I can't live in Hamburg. You know? Yeah, we have this climate change. It's good for Hamburg. Right. We have more sun now. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, but, but sometimes look at, look it. Look on the television. Look at yourself on the television. Mm. Look. Let me see. Yes. <laughs> I see myself from the side. Yeah, and you fun. look quite good. Look how smiley you are. Yeah. <laughs> look, look. <laughs> okay. You see? But, uh, yeah, it's very tough because when you go out somewhere in Hamburg, you probably have a job, do you? At the moment, I don't, don't have really have any more a job. Okay. I fell out of... A lot of things. Okay, so you fell ago. out, but yeah. anyway, when you go and buy your groceries in Hamburg, mm -hmm. you have to see all these miserable people going around buying their vegetables, mm -hmm. complaining about the cost of everything or how much it's raining or whatever. You know? mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be like that, you see. Did we all come to this planet to complain about the cost of the groceries? I hope not. But actually, I feel sometimes I'm irritated because if I go outside, I mean, it's a nice irritation, but people look at me and laugh, not laugh, but smile, and they're nice. Very good. Yeah. Right. But I know this my whole life. I always ask people then, do I have something? Why do they smile so much at me? <laughs> I was irritated. You were irritated that they <laughs> smiled at you? Yeah, we sometimes thought, oh, in in the last two years, my nose is too big. Yeah, my exactly. Ear is... I was uh, insecure then. Yeah. But in the last years, because I fell out of everything, I had a lot of time, and I meditated a lot, and I also have a meditation uh, group in Hamburg, and in this group we also share experience like this, so this strengthened me. And uh, gave this me is a very important advice, you know. If you're just starting to meditate, try to find a group where you can go and meet the other people who are meditating. This is actually very helpful in the beginning. You see, it is because you can share together your experiences, and it'll just help you to come deeper if you can do that in in the beginning of meditation. And then later you can stay at home and do it by yourself, but. It's in the beginning very, very good to be part of a group, actually. Yeah. And then I start yeah, getting informed and thinking about all these things you also told us. Like, I'm not here just to work and to please other people. So then I started to experience these things in a different way. I started to smile back. I had nice contact with people. Yeah, I, I tried that today myself, you know. Yeah? Yeah, because I've been going to these big exhibitions for the last, uh, I don't know, many years. And I would walk around and only look at the paintings, you know. And today, I don't know really how it happened. I wasn't planning it. I started talking to the people running the galleries, you know. Have you been to exhibitions? They sit there looking very bored, you know, <laughs> looking in their laptop, hoping somebody's going to buy one of the paintings, you know. So I started today to talk to them, you know, because when I would find a painting that I liked, I knew they were like 200,000 or something, you know. Nothing in that exhibition is much less than that. But I would go to them and say, excuse me, could you tell me how much this painting was? And, you know, for example, Gerard Richter, have you ever heard of him? He's one of the famous German painters lives in Cologne, he's 93 now. He's probably one of the most three or four most famous living painters. Wonderful guy. I really like his paintings. And apparently, um, 20 years ago, he um, published a book in French, that's what they told me today. And he took um, 20 books, I think, or 30 books, and he painted on the covers of the books. 
those book covers were being sold in this exhibition today in three different galleries for 220,000. Amazing, huh? Beautiful paintings, but only this big. I was asking one gallery lady, and I was pulling her leg a bit, and I was saying, well, you know, do people really come with 220,000 to buy such a little painting? How many do you sell in this exhibition? How many do you expect to sell? You see? That makes these people very kind of a bit nervous, you know, that I'm asking all these questions. So I started having fun with all these gallery people, not all, but a few of the gallery people. You see. So it's nice to play like that. Yeah. I mean, human beings are now conditioned to be very careful, you know. There was a woman, rather beautiful looking woman, walking around with her friend, yeah? But she had a funny belt on. And I really wanted to go and tell her, you know, you're very beautiful, you've got beautiful clothes, but don't wear that belt again, you know, that really spoils the whole show, you know? And my friend, I went with Radha, and she said, don't do that, you know? She probably, <laughs> probably slapped you or something, you know? Yeah. You see? You're not allowed to be real. You have to just play the game, you know? You have to play the game can't be real. The only place where you can really have fun is in a, in a cafe. Yeah? You can play with the waitresses or the waiters. You know? You've done that. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, but this is touching when you say it's you cannot be real. Yeah, who is real? Do you know anybody in your life who's real? You know how it is. You meet somebody in the morning. Say, how are you today? Hmm. They don't mean you, they don't want to know, they just want to say it, you know, yeah. be polite. You know? They don't really want you to start telling them, well, actually, my leg is hurting. And That's true. I didn't have breakfast today and I'm a bit thirsty. And anyway, my ear doesn't work, so I can't hear you very well. If you start <laughs> doing that, you know. I've been to America and they ask you always, like, what's up? And then I did the mistake, I answered, what's up? And he, the guy was very irritated. He didn't yeah. want to know. Yeah, they don't want to know. They yeah. just want to say hello in a kind of very superficial way. And then a way. friend of mine, he explained it to me, you don't tell you them uh, how you are. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, you just say, ah, oh, good, what's up? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it was weird. But I think this is one of my big challenge in life. I always wanted to be real. So, and um, now it's encouraging to be in this kind of uh, groups because here I can experience to be real, or I try at least. Yeah, I mean, I mean if you want to, some of you, I met a couple of people earlier, they're talking about they, they're interested to transform and so on. And they're maybe interested to go further than just closing your eyes and meditating. So, so what would be the next big job? And it's really a big job. So the next big job is to start to understand all your bullshit. You don't know this probably, but you're full of bullshit. You see? And this bullshit is constantly running through your mind. Constant thoughts about all kind of nonsense that you were told maybe when you were very small or even when you were a bit bigger, you see. So your mind is being completely conditioned and you completely believe everything in there. So when you get, you know, maybe five times a day the thought, I'm not good enough, which is rather a common structure of the mind. You know? When you get this thought, what do you do? Do you say, no, 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 of course I'm good enough. I'm a human being, why aren't I good enough? I'm absolutely good enough. Do you say that? No, 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 you don't. You say, yes, I'm not good enough. And then you go and buy yourself a new dress or a new car or whatever it is, because you think that if you buy this beautiful new red car, you'll be good enough then. Or a new dress or a new T-shirt or something to be good enough, you see. So we're all living like that. We're all living as con Conditioned robots, excuse me for saying that. Conditioned robots. And we don't think we're conditioned robots. We think we really are a conscious person 
and I really, through my consciousness, I really understand everything. And I'm really available for each moment with whatever happens. But it's not true. I know it's not true because I've lived here now for 30 years, no, no, sorry, 20 years, with about, uh, well, many different people were here, and we have many people coming for a short time and going away again. So I have a lot of contact with humanity. I'm a sort of expert, you can say, on humanity. Unfortunately, everybody lives in their bullshit and believes they are the bullshit. And you don't have any mechanism even to see that, you see. You don't even know how you would see that you're full of bullshit, you see. And do you know how we do it in this community? We work together. So these things, right, we work a lot together. But the work of, I don't know, cooking lunch or working in the garden, right, gradually this exposes all your bullshit. And my job, right, is just to watch you playing around and come to understand what is your bullshit. So this person is like that, and that one is like that. And then my job is to put them into situations where they see for themselves their bullshit. It's not enough that I see it, you have to see it yourself. And not only see it, you have to want to change it. And changing is not a five-minute job, it's not a weekend's job. It takes you five or ten years. And even living in this kind of community it takes five or ten years. I've got quite a lot of people here who have been living with me for more than ten years. And they've got great achievements. Great achievements. But they're not yet free. Sorry, we are looking a bit shocked. Are you okay? <laughs> are you sure? You know what this means? Total resistance. <laughs> but aren't you, who's getting, aren't you translating for everybody? Ah, oh, you see, the people who want to translate, you want, have, you can have a translation, you know? Okay, anyway, now you look a bit better. But this is like, <laughs> leave me alone, I don't want to know anything about anything. That's what this means. So if you meet somebody and they say, oh, it's very lovely to meet you, I'm very happy to meet you, and they do it like this, it's not true what their mouth is saying, you see. What they really mean is, please piss off, I don't like you. <laughs> not true. <laughs> well, it's not true for you, but... Uh, yeah. Okay, so it's very nice and little beginning chat. Are you here next week? Yes. Oh, we'll have I lots will. of time to play then. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> So maybe somebody else likes to come. Okay. So this is somebody who's lived here for, I think, 12, 12 years? 11. 11 years. And right now he's in a kind of crisis because he didn't really have a good time with his daddy. So he has a big issue about authority. And I, I can imagine a lot of other people sitting here have a lot of trouble with authority. See, mummy authority or daddy authority, and you have to deal with this authority story because right now, although we get along fairly well, he projects his daddy then onto me because I'm the kind of authority. You see, that so makes it very difficult for him to really get the biggest benefit from living in this community. You see, because he kind of avoids me as much as he can. See, and he's been doing it for 11 years, can you imagine? Choosing to live in a community based on opening everything up, and he's got his own little schemes for how he uh, doesn't really let you to challenge him being so closed up. So I passed him just now before the meeting, and I suggested that he should come and expose himself. You see? So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's all right. Have you said? I mean, it's always a bit um, shocking because I thought in the last weeks I do bit better, but it seems the feedback I got is the opposite. Um, so, what would be a bit better? 
Well, I feel inside better. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I had. Yeah, but uh, you have to be careful, you see, because I guess you feel better or best when people just leave you alone. Yeah, this in general, yes. I uh, never ever had a problem being alone. Yeah, but when they myself, leave you alone, darling, you're just this... carrying on in your own fantasy about I'm okay, but you're not okay. You know? People have started to tell you you're not okay. And I mean, also when I was with people, it was different than some weeks before. I felt inside at least. But yeah, but they I mean, didn't think that they because know. they're complaining to me about you. Yes. So this is a bit shocking. Yeah. 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 Be shocked. You see, this is the beautiful thing, you see, because you, you're going to experience now quite a strong meeting between us, right? Because I'm not being nice to him. I'm going to be exactly as I want to be with him. So I don't know where it's going to go, but probably there'll be a few tough moments. But he's been here for 11 years. If you've just been here for 11 days, of course I'm going to be very nice to you. But 11 years! hiding in this wonderful community. How can I be nice to him? You see? So what I have to be is I have to show him, I don't know how I'm going to do that yet, but I have to try to show him how he's got himself very lost, you see? So this is going to sound to some of you really horrible, what I'm going to say to him. I'm going to say things that you would never say to anybody, maybe. I don't know, but maybe. And this is what you have to have. You have to have a fucking horrible teacher who will tell you all the horrible things about you. You see? And then you have a chance to change those horrible things. But you know perfectly well, everybody here will have a best friend. Best friend. I bet you've all got a best friend. So when you have a bit of a difficult day, you call your best friend and say, how about a coffee today? Shall we have a meeting? And then you go to the coffee shop and you sit with your best friend and you say, oh, you know, it's really difficult with my husband or I didn't like my job at the moment. And, and your best friend says, oh, yeah, I understand. That's really terrible. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe I can help you find a new job. Or, you know, your best friend never tells you what you need to hear. Maybe the reason that your job isn't working out very well is you're bloody lazy and you don't do a good job, you know? But who's going to tell you you're lazy? Not your best friend, of course. So who's going to tell you? And you have to know these things, otherwise you won't change. So this guy, I mean, everybody likes him. He's actually, you can see, he's a sweet guy, nice smile, he's a very competent guy with what he does. Nothing wrong at all. The only thing that's really wrong is he had a lousy connection to his daddy. But of course, that was many years ago. Isn't that right? True, yes. Can you tell them a bit about that? Yeah, so, I mean, the problem with my father was that he was very invisible and he didn't ever show any emotions actually, yeah? So he was very locked in This is himself. many people's daddies now, right? He's going to tell you your daddy's story as well. See, most daddies are a bit like this daddy. Yeah, and um, this I also carry inside, yeah. And... Yeah, it was very, very rare where there were moments you could really... I could really meet him, like if he shows him emotions or something, it was very rare and over all the years. And he died like three years ago, so um, suddenly, very suddenly. And um, yeah, it's a kind of pity, never, I don't know who he really was. And Could he know who he was? Probably not. Probably not. And Three weeks ago, I did a family constellation about, it was actually about my father then, the topic. And there was something um, in his very early childhood, or even when he was unborn in the mother's belly, it seems, there was a big fear. Uh, it had, had to do with the Second World War and so on. And this could release, and the person who represented my father, we could really it was a wonderful meeting, yeah? I had really the feeling I could, the first time, really um, encounter him. This was in the family constellation. This was in the family constellation, yeah? So, like, so very. If anybody else here has got difficulties <clears throat> like this, 
there is something you can get in uh, certain places, we can introduce you if you want, where they do something called family constellation. This is a very almost magic uh, kind of therapy. Yes, it's magic. And it was also then like two days, very energetic inside. And what I can see, what changed inside is it's a bit, there was this old heaviness I always had, like an old, yeah, can't really say what it is, like heavy, yeah? And this seems much less and it's inside more easy or more bright, you can say, yeah. And it said that uh, this, thing what happened there this healing you can say takes up to three months or a bit longer to develop whatever it will be you don't know it's just yeah you can't do it it's just in the air or whatever yeah so um, i don't know what will still happen but um, that's why i'm a bit shocked that it's also different the perception Sorry, I'm just uh, a bit... <sighs> I have to look after my kids. Can you imagine? I've got two <laughs> girls I have to look after, you know, so I'm just looking after them now. Okay, good. Yeah, so it seems maybe not only the topic with my father, so there might be something else. I don't know. I mean, you, there is. Did you bring your mother into this? Yeah, the mother was also there, but uh, she didn't. T um, there was not a big role in her. It was clearly the father's topic somehow. Yeah, a topic with the father. He could not. Um, he basically was separate, separated. And was he able to connect to your mother? Um, because the way you're describing yeah, yeah. Yes. him, that he couldn't connect to his son. Probably he couldn't connect to his wife either. In the beginning, I think it was even like that, that the mother, mother was behind my father, or a bit behind. But this changed at some point. Also it was, yeah, and there was always also, he was separate, yeah. And um, yeah, it was, it, it, it's how it was. He was always very separate. But a bit better later, um, maybe in his after his fifties or so. But uh, still, it was only a certain. Do you think extent. they had a nice time together? No, never. I mean, it was always a horrible situation at home. Lots of struggle and struggle. Yes, because he didn't take his role really, and my mother felt um, like overloaded with the All whole right. family. Right. And uh, I also must say, um, I have a sister and a bigger brother. They I think carry the same inside, yeah, because they're also struggling with some things. I struggle. I see some same things. I met your brother, but I haven't. I didn't know you had a sister. Yeah, she never wanted to meet me here. Um, I invited her very often, but um, she didn't she, I think come. she has lots of fear and other things. What is she? What she afraid of? We might eat herself. Her. I didn't tell you this, but if you don't behave well, we're going to eat you on Monday. <laughs> Yeah, it's a terrible, dangerous place here, you know. Yeah. Every Monday we eat all the people we don't like. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm a lot joking, don't you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> wait till Monday. No, I am joking, actually. I, I know I have to be careful with German people because they often think my outrageous jokes are really true, you know. No. Anyway, we won't eat anybody on Monday, but on Tuesday we might. <laughs> I'm surprised we haven't eaten you, actually. Not much to eat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it sounds like this... this um, family constellation was quite helpful for you. Yes. Um, I mean, I had some others before, but it was different this time, what happened. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and there might be more, yeah, much more. Also with my mother, for sure. I mean, there's um, 
She was the other way. She was loud. She was more like your type. Really? <laughs> and what is my type? <laughs> yeah, like uh, expressing what was inside. Yeah, she didn't really care what uh, if it was good or bad. Or she had a lot of good and bad. So you had quite a good time with your mother, it sounds. Yeah, I mean, there was a more connection definitely to my mother, of All course, right. yes. Right. Because she showed emotion and my father did not. And I think this is uh, the thing where the fear comes from when you don't know who the other is. You don't know anything. You know, it's like a black hole. It, so Do you think your mother had a lover? No. Not, I mean, there were people who were interested, but she was much too busy and... Um, she was too what? Catholic, too busy with the family and job. And oh, she was Catholic. Things. Both very Catholic. Yeah, My father even That's more. a good example of what happens. You know, the <laughs> wife must have been completely unhappy. The daddy didn't want to play with her and that didn't have any connection to his feelings. So wouldn't it be reasonable that she found a lover? But she can't because she's got all this Catholic bullshit inside until death do us part, you see. So then she lived probably for 30 years, completely unhappy. Yeah. I'm and sure this unhappiness affected years. her kids, of course. Yeah. yeah. That's how it is, yeah. Well, it doesn't it's have to strong, be like that, but yeah. yes, a lot of people live like that. Yeah. Or even worse, of course. Yeah. I mean, they were not like horrible parents, but the normal thing, this is this... When the parents just struggle and um, don't come along with each other in the end, yeah? And nothing really changes, yeah? Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing over time, which is the strong thing. I mean, my parents were not so much in a war. My parents can be, I remember my parents as, my father would be upstairs listening to Beethoven and my mother would be listening to Frank Sinatra in the kitchen. That was basically their relationship. They actually got along fairly well and I can remember them quite nicely, but they were completely incompatible, actually. So gradually, you know, she became the mummy and looking after the kitchen and the kids and daddy gradually withdrew into his work and his interests and Mozart and Beethoven. And of course, these kind of things have a very strong influence on our inner psyche. It must be already very early because I, I never, when I think back as a small child, I al already was quite, yeah. With myself, I never was the one who wanted to have many friends or so. Yeah, I had some friends, but it was always like this in the end. Yeah? So I can't even remember that it was different. Actually, talking of friends, Indira, because I'll probably forget, with Isabella, let's find out about the OGS, yeah? I could support that if they need that. Because she's a lovely little girl. Yeah. So what are you going to do about all of this tragedy? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, even more family constellation and, um, yeah. I mean, there's... For example, how about using me as daddy, which you already do, and uh, you try to create a new connection between mm -hmm. me as the um, projected daddy mm -hmm. in your life, because that's what you do with me, yes. actually. No choice, really. Eh? It's well, you just, have a choice, because yeah. I'm not really like your real daddy. I'm exactly the opposite yes. you just yeah, said. I mean, you know, of I'm, course, it's not conscious. Unfortunately yeah. for you, I'm a bit like difficult for you, because I'm exactly opposite to your daddy and I'm constantly you know mm -hmm. so maybe you have to move in some way and see that you have to deal with this guy who is always you know who's not going to be like your daddy and isn't like your daddy no. and you chose to come and live with me I didn't choose to live with you you chose to come here and live for 11 years amazing yeah 
Yes, I also never thought that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you don't want to go on with this story, do you? No, I don't want. It's, I mean, sometimes even a bit, what, what is it? I mean, if I, it would be easy to change, I would have done it, yeah? So it's like, oh, a bit helpless. Well, I'm not sure you would have done it, you see, because, you know, actually it's not so really easy to start being honest with yourself, actually. You know? It's a lot more comfortable to just live with all this bullshit inside. Because this bullshit is completely familiar. And it maybe if you're, say, 30 years old, it's been there for... 20 years already. So it's much easier just to be a miserable sod, if that's what you are, than to want to change that energy from being a miserable sod, you see? Because miserable sod is very familiar. And changing yourself into a happy bunny, well, that's a real job, you know, that's quite a lot of work. Are you ready to do it? This is a big decision that very few human beings ever make, from my experience. I've been doing this kind of stuff for 30 years now. So I can see that there's very few human beings, and if I look around now, there's very few of you here, who actually really want to become free, who really want to be as you are. Be as you are. This is a quotation from this guy. But this is very beautiful, be as you are, you see. What be as you are means that all this old stuff that makes you behave in a certain way has been dealt with. And so what's inside your head is pretty empty. And so when there's a situation, I don't know what it would be, you walk in the garden and suddenly you see a beautiful flower which you don't remember being in the garden or something, you know. Wow! And you don't remember that your father didn't like that kind of flower you know, and never had it in his garden, for example. I don't know, I'm being a bit silly. You see. So to become be as you are, be as you are is everybody's birthright as a human being. You arrive on this planet, I always make the joke about, you arrive on the planet and hanging around your neck is a, a little invitation. It says, welcome, have fun. Welcome, have fun. It's around the neck of every baby when they arrive. And if you've ever met a baby, they're exactly doing that. They're lying there, guggling away and having milk. and They have a great time in there pretty little, you know. So mm -hmm. they exactly understand the invitation. But unfortunately, this invitation gets lost in the shower or the bath or somewhere. And by the time they get a bit more conscious when they get to four or five, nobody has ever reminded them about the invitation. So they've forgotten about that. or well, they never really remembered it even, you see. And then life starts happening. There's mummy saying, brush your teeth, you know, wash behind your ear. You know, now's the time to get up. You're going to be late for school. All this kind of stuff that goes on every day. Yeah? So the poor little kid doesn't know that she's invited mm. or he's invited to have fun. I mean, it doesn't seem like a fun place here, really. Is it fun living in Germany, actually? <laughs> <laughs> of course it isn't. Of course it isn't. But it's not fun living in England either. And now that Trump's elected in America, it's going to be horrible there, I can tell you. He's got all kind of horrible plans for America. So the only place where you can be as you are is inside yourself. You can make a priority for freedom, freedom to be yourself. It's not that you don't have to have a revolution. You don't have to take all the other billions of people with you, just change yourself. And that's already going to take you 30 years, let's say, being generous. Come on, get on with it, huh? 
Yes. Okay. So yeah. next Friday we'll talk again and mm -hmm. see what happened this week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know everybody in the community is now Supported. on your case. You know? That's good, yeah, because it's good to get feedback. Otherwise, yes. I don't know. Yeah, oh, yeah. You see, he's ready mm -hmm. for feedback. It took him 11 years, but now he's ready. <laughs> Some people are slower than other people. Yes, see? I was not slow. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Well, actually, I wasn't so bad with him. I was, I was quite nice, I think. <laughs> I can be much worse. Much worse. <clears throat> so the thing is, if, if you're sitting in this meeting, it means that you have a question. Because if you didn't have a question, you wouldn't come this weekend. You wouldn't come into this meeting. So you've all got a question. The question is, are you going to come and answer your question? I will try to answer it. Not, no promises, but... You know. Kate's going to come up now. Aren't you Kate? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's easy for me to get people, you see, because I say this little thing I just said, and then Kate immediately was like, yes, I'm coming. You know? well, she I'm didn't sorry. know that she was, yes, I'm coming, but is it true? You were a bit uh, open to the idea, weren't you? Yes, I don't have a really particular question, actually. No, but I have. Yes? Yeah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Today I heard some terrible news about you. Oh, <laughs> Dina, it is fast. <laughs> so this is this is a Ukrainian lady. I think I met you when you in Ukraine. I met you. I think yes. Yeah, we met in Ukraine because I used to go regularly to Ukraine every three months, and actually outside Kiev I have a beautiful meditation center, which I was managing for about ten years. But of course now it's not available anymore, unfortunately. So I met her actually at this place maybe in, in Ukraine. So anyway, she's come now to England, uh, to Germany. She's a refugee in one way. And today I heard that she's got a job. And this is really a terrible story. <laughs> <laughs> you see, when she came first to you here, she was a bit vulnerable, of course, coming here to another country when your country is at war, she felt a bit vulnerable. So in the beginning, do you know what she did? She came first to have a girlfriend. She had, actually, she had the girlfriend of the mother of my children. That's how I know her. Okay. It's she a long became, story. <laughs> it's a bit of a long story, but anyway, <laughs> the reason why I don't live with the, my, the mother of my children is because the mother of my children had the children and then she told me, well, actually, I don't want to live with a man. I want to live with a woman. So now she's been living with a few women, and she was one of these few women. Yeah? So, um, so that's how I know Kate, really. Yeah? <laughs> and then Kate, didn't, it didn't work out so well, because the mother of my children is a bit difficult. So, <laughs> so she decided to leave that relationship and come and live in this community. So we welcomed her, everything was okay for a while, you know. But unfortunately, Kate has lots of bullshit inside. So it became very uncomfortable for Kate because in this community, we started revealing to her all her bullshit. And that became very uncomfortable. So one day she left. Yeah? And now you've got a job. <laughs> you think this is wonderful, but to me it's not wonderful. Darling. Why not? Because you first of all wanted to know yourself. You but wanted I to do transform it. yourself. I did it. I mean, just like I'm well, still you didn't doing do it. it. I'm sorry, excuse me. Of course, I didn't do it you here did a bit. for the last two years or whatever. Yeah, well, you did it somewhere else. Very good. Yes, yes. And actually, anyway, you look about... quite good tonight. I can. In general, I'm quite good. Yeah, yeah. quite good. But don't yeah. you want to be very good? Very good is very different from quite good. Um, but you've accepted quite good. And now you get a job, and you may think this job is really I'm exciting. Excited anyway. She's excited. She got a job working at the airport selling food or something, I don't know. And she thinks this is very exciting. But of course, it's not going to be very exciting. It's going to be horrible. 
going to be horrible. There'll be horrible people there. She won't like them. And then she probably, her boss will be projected on as her daddy or something. And it'll all get horrible. It's not that terrible. Sometimes it's just like uh, it's uh, kind of challenging as well. When you're playing this game, yeah, just like, and in at this moment, I find it quite important for myself because uh, my plan is to stay here in Germany and for that I need to work. I mean, just like uh, for, in my case. And I'm okay with that, you know? And uh, I like to work anyway. And I like what I'm gonna do. So it's, uh, it's just uh, part of the process, why not? If I'm gonna take it like, oh my God, 8 a.m., I need to go to job, of course. But if I wake up and just I'm happy to do what I do, and anyway, just like I'm in a good state right now. I'm not like, a, I don't find it depressive or terrible, as you said. Yeah, but I, know I think you, it's just I, a moment. It's yeah. okay. I mean, everything you're saying is okay. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna join all the others and you won't be any worse. You may be even a bit better than the majority. But I know you very well. I know what's inside you. Yes. And until you deal with all that, you're never going to be really free and you're never really going to be feeling in love. It's difficult, you're right. Yeah, just like when you're, especially when you're with the people who completely don't understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, just like even about when I'm trying to share what is happening inside. Um, but it's doable. If, well, of course if it's you doable, at least find because everybody people, else yeah. is doing it doable. Yeah. Everybody's living in doable. Yeah. But they're not living in their truth. They're not even able to express their truth. How are you today, Kate? So if somebody at the airport yeah. asks you, how are you today, Kate? Just remember, you don't say anything. You just smile and say, I'm very good. And no, they'll be happy. No, no, I'm not going to do it. No, yeah. no, okay. Anyway, you start telling them why you're not good and you'll find that, you know, we just got somebody telling us about that. People don't want to know. But who cares? I'm just. Well, yeah, I think you I might care. Am, huh? You might care. It's also the game. Sometimes you play the game. Sometimes you just become to yourself. No. Well, in my case, I like to be myself all the time. Because you know, I mean, just like you live in a spiritual community, yeah? You're a bit protected by the people. I'm the same when I go people. out. I'm even worse. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, but you're still protected with I these people. I forget that yeah. these people aren't in my community, so yeah. I I'm, I'm, can be outrageous everywhere. I mean, that girl nearly got me telling her to take off her belt today. I mean, Rada kind of grabbed me and said, don't do that. Just do it. Why not? Anyway, well, what she would have slapped me or something. Okay, mm -hmm. just you can survive. Well, I don't like being slapped. <laughs> you just, I mean, just like in this case. And I mean, if she doesn't want me to tell her that, I don't care really. You know, it's not a big deal. You know. But I understand what you mean. I understand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying to you because yeah. I'm basically saying that you're accepting the average and you're not really going for what you could be going for and you know what you could be going for but you decided not to go for it. You don't have to go for it in this community with this guy, you know, you probably had enough of me, but you could go somewhere else and find somebody that's more user-friendly for you because it's, you know it's worth it. No, I'm completely okay with you. I mean, just like, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I want to have more free time for myself. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. That's good. all, yeah. It's, it's a bit different compared to what you're offering, so it's... <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is She's only really my decision. into finding nice girlfriends. Any nice girlfriends here? You know, she connect with Kate. She... What? I'm just trying to find you a nice girlfriend. I, I do have. You have? Oh, uh, she's already yeah. got one. Sorry, you're too late. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. If you wait, if you're patient, maybe next year. You, know, we'll <laughs> you never know, yeah. <laughs> but I do know, darling. I do know. How long did you last with my uh, partner? Not very long, yeah. About one year, I think, wasn't it? With our ex? Yeah, with Julia. You <laughs> lost <him. laughs> I don't know, three, three years. Yeah. It was three years together, yeah. Yeah, three years. Yeah. yeah. Well, I beat you. I was about six or seven years. <laughs> and I got a beautiful nice job. And I got a beautiful <laughs> present out of it. Can you imagine somebody who's 80 having eight year old daughters? 
And the ones who are staying next week, you're going to have a great time meeting them because they're pretty unusual. And if you've got the guts to meet them, they'll, you'll have a nice time with them. They don't have any problem to tell you whatever they like. And if you don't behave well, they'll tell you, go away, go away, please, go away. I don't want to, don't, don't come in the kitchen, go out. One of my daughters sent somebody, who was it, that she sent out of the kitchen and out of the house even, didn't she? Who was it that knows about that story? Oh, it doesn't matter. Good. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're happy. Hope it works out. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. So, is there somebody who would like to come and ask a question, but it's a bit scary, you know? So, my advice to you is, when the next person goes away from the chair, you quickly jump up and come here. You don't even think. See? If you think you're lost, okay, very good. We always think, oh, I've got to have a good question. Don't have any question. doesn't matter. Just come if you want. Expose yourself to something new. <laughs> oh, this is a Spanish woman. <laughs> Extremely difficult. But I'm told she's a very, very nice human being. But she's a little bit difficult. Quite difficult. <laughs> so, hello. Hi. <sighs> my daughters really like her. I don't know why, but I do know why. <laughs> Did you have a good time with them? Yes. Yes. You like kids? Mm. So what's your first impression of this place? Are you... It's a bit surprised what you found here today. Not really. I mean, it's exactly the same energy uh, from the time the the retreat I was in Spain. Exactly the same. And even I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> I mean, it was not in my plans, and it's not something I did from the mind because probably from the mind I will not be here. But today, when I was coming on the airport, I felt I have to be here. So something was just bringing me here. And you know that I have a lot of resistance, and I really struggle every time I come here. But I've been here before. What do you mean every time you come here? Never well, came before. well it's every time it's you and me, me we are in contact, or months, we talk. Three months to get you here. Donna. Yeah, so every don't time say, well, we I talk. Come here. You never came here. Hmm. You didn't want to come here. <laughs> Yeah, but every time, <laughs> I mean, when I was in Denia the first time, and you know, every this, this last few months, I had to get some help, you know, to get you here. Mm -hmm. Couldn't manage by myself. I had to get, you know. <laughs> but yes, I I just arrive and it felt like I have to be here, so that's it. And then every time I am here, I feel this presence. And all these disappear. Of course, after, <laughs> you know, things happen and I struggle and the resistance appear. But every time I see you, I'm very happy. Really? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I didn't know that you would be very happy seeing me. I mean, I, you gave me the impression I was next to the devil, actually. Like the devil's assistant or something. No, there are things from you that... Uh, I don't want to say I don't like, but that uh, it's difficult for me to accept, let's say. Um, I don't like when people tell me what I have to do or how I have to do things. I, I really struggle with this, you know. But the good thing is that after I see it uh, by myself. And this for me works, you know. So every time, well, when I was here that time or when we... Have our You've never been here. You keep no, saying when I mean, I, I, when you were here three months ago in Spain in our yeah, other when, house. When I say here is community, right? right it's sure, you. Sure. It's you. Me. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, sometimes I have this, this resistance, but after when I process it, 
and I see it by myself like this, it works. Uh, so yeah, I'm here <laughs> now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. I can feel you're here now. Yeah. And you took your courage to come and sit here. Is there anything we should talk about? And your son is America now, yeah? Is he doing okay there? He's very good. Very good. Okay, good. Yeah. So that makes it much easier for you. Yes. Mm. Okay. Okay. Somebody else, quick, quick, come, especially the guy at the back, he's coming, good, very good. When I saw you sitting there, I thought, oh, so I'm glad you're coming here. If you're sitting in the back, you have to be careful because I usually invite people from the back row to come here when I don't have anybody else to talk to. So there's a woman from Copenhagen I might ask to come here. If you sit in the back, you see, you immediately tell me that you're a bit scary. Ah. Oh. Oh, okay. Very good. She's got a very good answer, you see. <laughs> so, hi. Hi. Um, my name is Mark. And. Um, Mark lives in Cologne, right? Yes. He's very interested. But he never heard about us, even though we're here 20 years. He never heard about us, you see. I'm sorry, yeah. No, I don't have to. I'm not sorry for me, darling. But what about you? You could have started <laughs> your spiritual work twenty years ago. Um, you probably were about ten, twenty years ago, were you? No, I only started three years ago, but I'm thirty-three. Um, there you are. You see, so you could have started twenty years ago. You would have been what? Definitely thirteen. Definitely. Yeah, um, you could have joined. Um, where's she gone? Madugon. Oh, she's there. Okay. What, what I'm wondering right now after I listen to you um, is, is it possible to feel the love that you describe living like a normal life, having a job? Or are you saying it's not possible to be within this environment and have this energy, energy that you're talking about? Well, I think it's possible. To, you know, and, and everything is possible if you have an inner priority that you want to go in this kind of inner journey. The, the inner journey starts when you realize that most of the time you're looking out in the world. You're smelling things, you're looking at things, you're listening to things, you're talking, you're completely busy in the world out there. So it, it starts when you realize that there's another world inside you. And from this inside world, you're projecting the outside world. So when you come to realize that, which is actually not so easy to realize, because the society has been set up in a way that you never realize that. Because if you really realized it, you wouldn't go to the office at 8 o'clock in the morning, you see. You wouldn't, just wouldn't do it. Would you? I, I quit my office when I was 26. So I lived in London. I luckily got a very good job in a really nice design office. They paid me lots of money. They were nice people. I could still be doing it. I probably have piles of gold bars in my basement. You know? I, I couldn't do it anymore. You see? Um, and what I'm wondering about is that you were just telling us that um, the mother of your children that you you don't live with her anymore. And what I wonder is she because she doesn't live with me anymore. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. She likes to live with women. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's a bit sad. You know, one day she told me, <clears throat> John, David, you know, I don't really want to live with you anymore because I would really like to live with a woman. I said, very, very good. I was thinking, oh, two women, two wives, great, you know. She said, no, no, this is not include you. Um, what I just wonder is because you're, you're talking about to feel the real energy, the real love, you have to feel it from within. And I'm, I'm really trying this right now. But um, as you also said in, uh, in the society, we always try to find someone we can live with, we can share love and we can love someone who loves us. Um, how is this 
how do you really live it in a in a free loving way from within that you, can you be with someone else and love the other one and still have the real love the real energy i i still don't get it well, how, how yeah, do you of course how is everything it? everything is possible you know i'm not saying i'm not ne negating the whole of human life you know i mean i've met a couple of very happy couples in 80 years you know two <laughs> So there may be a few others around, but I haven't met them all. But uh, the kind of thing that happened to me in my life, I remember once, you know, in South Germany, I was invited to a house. This couple were a bit spiritual, kind of nice people. They had, they had some friends, and they invited me to come to their house and give a meeting. So I went there, nice group of people. I remember they had a very nice cat. You know, he was one of these cats that always looks happy, you know. He was sort of sitting in the side of the meeting looking very happy. And I thought, oh, well, they have a nice cat. They're probably very happy together, this couple. You know? So I was very ready to kind of, you know. And at the end of the meeting, they've, they've got all kind of healthy teas and biscuits. And it was all very lovely, yeah. But I got a bit tired, so I asked the wife, "Can I? is there somewhere I can just go and maybe just be quiet for a while? So she took me up on the landing and I sat in some couch or something. And then a bit later she came and said, you know, if you're very tired, because I was going to stay the night in that house, she said, would you like a bath? I said, oh, that could be nice. So I remember this moment. We were both sitting on the edge of the bath, right? And she didn't, I don't think we got into the bath story, but we were just sitting on this bath. And then it all came out, right? So a husband was completely into the idea that you signed a marriage contract with me and therefore I have the right to have sex with you regularly. And she's told me, I can't stand him touching me even. Right? So I was really shocked because it seemed like I'd finally found one of those few couples who were very happy together. She was staying there because I can't remember, but maybe she had two or three children. I can't remember, really. You see? She told me, I can't stand him touching. I said, well, why don't you agree that he doesn't touch you? No, no. He says, I have the right to touch you because you signed my marriage contract. How many women of you would like to put up with that? You see? So it's very easy to appear like a happy couple, but how many happy couples are there really, really, really? Not many. Not many. I mean, you can maybe th be the first one in Cologne. <laughs> so um, the teachers uh, who taught you back in the days, uh, did they have relationships or were they by themselves their whole life? Well, my, my teachers were three Indian men. Yes. They never had a, probably any relationship with a woman or even a man. You know? okay. I think they all lived the, the solitary not solitary, but they, um, what do you call it, um, brahmacharya means without sex, okay. probably. I don't know, really. Okay. But you, you can you can have the energy and have the love and still have some kind of the normal, you know, life within society. They, they, well, what, that's what I don't Everything is get. possible. You know, you want me to tell you as if, if I tell you it, it's true, you know, but mm. it all depends on you and your partner, you know. Mm. I mean, you just heard an example of one relationship where he's completely still consumed by what happened in his family. You know? I could tell you a million stories like that. So maybe you're going to be a rare story where you and your wife and your children will live very lovely together. You've got money, you told me earlier. You've got a big company or something. So that part is not going to be a pressure on you. So let's see. Maybe your wife will marry you for your money. And then what? <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> no, hopefully not. So I best you don't tell people you have money if you want to have a nice wife. I mean, just meet somebody who loves you for your curly hair, you know. <laughs> you see? Because the whole thing is very complicated. Mm -hmm. And you're a little bit naive in a nice way because you haven't really lived the life so much yet, I don't think. That's my impression of it. Well, what, what exactly is life, in your opinion? Well, for example, you've been asking me about relationships. Yes. So how, what's the longest one you've had? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. Okay. Yes. So go back to your three and a half years relationship. Mm -hmm. Probably it started off in a very positive way. Mm -hmm. 
and in the beginning was completely lovely, it was exciting, it was, I don't know, got you excited every single day to meet this wonderful woman that you'd found, yeah? Mm -hmm. And what happened after three years, or maybe after two years? Yeah, it became regular, huh? it faded. Yeah, I, that's one of the struggles I have, that I have to find, like, the inner love. Like, many people have struggled with my parents and, you know, um, daddy issues and stuff like this. So, of course, I'm, I'm working on this to find, the real, as, you, as you described, the, the energy, the, the feeling within myself to, to really just love myself and uh, don't... Uh, you know, excuse me, sorry. what you're going to discover as you yes. carry on your journey, mm -hmm. I feel I'm happy to talk to you because I feel you have some kind of genuine priority, you know. But when you talk about loving yourself, mm -hmm. you don't have to love yourself. Okay. You are love. Okay. You don't have to love yourself. Your mind is going to love your heart. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, but normally the mind doesn't particularly love the heart, and the heart doesn't particularly love the mind. But you have a heart and you have a mind. You know? mm -hmm. So the job is to get rid of all this bullshit in your mind. And then your heart reveals itself. Your heart is always mm -hmm. there. You don't have to love your heart or love yourself. So just be. Just be, yeah. Be as you are. Mm -hmm. You seem to be a nice character, and you've got nice curly hair, and you're probably kind of an attractive bloke. And so you just do your life and be open to the things that happen to you. And the more you can, um, how can I say, welcome those things, deal with those things, they won't all be nice stuff. There'll be some good stuff and some not so good stuff. You see? And this is all together called human life. I don't think you'll meet anybody in your life who will be always good, you know? I mean, I have pretty good life, but I have some pretty tough stuff too. So I have tough shit, and I have great stuff, you know? It just depends. But it's all called life, you see? The Christians would like us to believe this bit is God, and that bit is hell, you know? Heaven and hell, you know? But that's not really true, I don't think. That's a story. You know, we can become free of the devil, we can become free of hell, but we can also become free of God, realizing that, sorry to say this, I'm also God. Beautiful, isn't it? And the amazing thing is that when I say we are God, I don't mean, you know, bearded man on the clouds or something. I mean the whole universal energy the whole universal energy in which we're not separate, we're absolutely part of that universal energy. I like to call it the divine intelligence because I can't call it God because I'm, you know, I was so pissed off with the clergyman in, when I was young that I can't talk about, you know, God really. He's a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a hassle, I would say to me. But I like to call God the divine intelligence. And we're all part of the divine intelligence. You're not separate from it. And this is also very beautiful. Isn't it? Very. Yeah. So you have all the good chances. You're, you're the divine intelligence. You're the love. Can't go wrong, can it? Let's try. Huh? It depends on what you've got in here, you see. Thank okay, you. it's enough, yeah? Okay, good. <laughs> so now we're going to talk to Copenhagen, because she's also in the back. She can drag her away, self away from the fire for a moment. So do you know why I'm inviting you? Because you thought I tried to hide? No, I invite you because I met you for a couple of minutes before and I see that you're actually very open mm -hmm. and you've chosen pretty consciously to come here and it's a pity you've got a big dog, otherwise you'd be here next week. So that's why I'm inviting you because I'm always looking for people like you. Mm. I'm looking for people who have made some kind of inner priority, you see. And I have the ability to see when somebody's made some sort of decision about this inner priority. 
and I feel you're such a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm. Yeah, and th this is beautiful because my job is to support that, you see. Mm. I'm not saying you want me to support you, but if you would decide you want me to support you, I'll be happy to support you. you know? Thank you. Because that's my job, and I'm always looking for... Actually, it's a funny thing, you see. Most of you guys think that you're busy looking for a good teacher. I'm a good teacher, and I'm always looking for good students, you see. It's bloody hard. So it's bloody hard. We've lost this guy. Has he gone to the toilet? Has he? Okay. <clears throat> Have you got friends who are interested in the same things? Not many. Not many. Because yeah. I used to, I was telling you earlier, I used to pretty regularly come to Copenhagen. There was a man there was organizing some, maybe he got 20 people or 10 people interested to meet me. Mm -hmm. And if you have 10 people or 20 people, I can come again. Mm, I like that, yeah. Mm. I think a lot of people are just unsure of what it is and not familiar with it and don't have a lot of friends who are into this stuff? What stuff? What stuff? Um, <laughs> the, the, the inner part of... When you go myself. to a coffee shop with your friends, you know, and you're having a difficult day because your boyfriend wasn't so nice or something, you know, you go and meet your best friend in the coffee shop, do you eventually or fairly quickly talk about your inner world to that friend? Hmm. Some of them, yeah. And do you value those friends a bit more because you realize that's quite special in a way? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty easy to... Um, realize when you're talking to someone with the same kind of language um, where you can go deeper and share what's really going on inside and and when you have those kind of meetings you probably leave the meeting feeling very nourished inside yeah absolutely yeah and that, in a way, supports your priority or your decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's when I know that it's something that I'm not doing enough of. Enough of. Right, right. Because you live in the countryside a lot. I mean, I like the people in Denmark, actually. That's why I'm inviting myself to come there, mm. if you can organize it. Because... Mm. Actually, the Danish people are a bit unusual, I would say. Okay. Because I discovered going there, a very interesting thing, you know, that Denmark is between Germany, in fact, they're rather close to Germany, and Sweden. That's a bit more space because they have a bit of water in between. You know? So it, apparently in the history of Denmark, you can tell me if I'm wrong, they were always a bit nervous about Germany, and they were always a bit nervous about Sweden, and they were always a bit like... We have to really, you know, keep our country kind of... And so when you meet Danish people in the beginning, they've got this energy which they learned that they have to do like this in the beginning, you see? And then when you get to know them, they suddenly go, oh, I can trust you after all. You're from England, not Germany, and not Sweden. Oh, okay, I can... Is this right a bit? Something like that? Yeah, I would say, yeah, that, that's not... Wrong. You know, for example, it's very interesting. I used to go to Berlin. Actually, I used to go everywhere before, but I don't go anywhere now much. But in Berlin, you can feel the same kind of thing as with Denmark. Maybe you don't know this if you're German, but, you know, Berlin was, was separated for some time, you know. They were under tremendous pressure in Berlin. 
the Russians kind of cut them off from Germany. And so the, the, they learned, again, this same kind of thing, you know, that you can feel in Denmark, you can feel with Berliners. They're a bit different. Anybody from Berlin? Is that true, what I'm saying? And of course, the people from East Germany, the same. When I first came to Germany 20-odd years ago, I, I had an organizer who lived in, in uh, Leipzig, in East Germany. And I quickly came to discover that the psyche of the East Germans and the psyche of the West Germans are very different because there used to be a wall in between. The wall's gone, but the inner effects of the wall are still there. I don't know now, maybe they're not so there, but when I first came 20 years ago, they were still there very strong. You probably know this, don't you? Is it right about East, East Germany and West Germany? Pretty different, isn't it? Right. Oh, you're from East Germany, yeah? Right. So these psych psychological things, they're extremely powerful, you see. And if you want to go on a, an inner journey to become free of those inner psychic issues, then there's a work to do, you see. This is not just sitting with your eyes closed. You have to start to really get in touch with what your issues are. He, he's got this issue of being from East Germany. You see. It's not so easy because actually there are lots of pretty terrible things happening in East Germany. The only good thing that I've ever heard about East Germany, actually, is that you could go swimming without your clothes on. They were quite good on that. Was in Germany. You didn't have to wear clothes, did you, in the beach? Is that right? It's right. They're pretty open with being naked, whereas in Eden, well, West Germany is quite good too, I would say. I don't know if you know this, you're one of the few countries where you can go to the sauna naked and you can be mixed up boys and girls. I remember going to Budapest, you know, I went to this big uh, sauna and I had to wear my swimming costume. Because, of course. Reason. Actually, yeah. I thought it was all of Germany where you could go naked, but then... Well, I don't, I'm not an expert on Germany, actually, but I mean, uh, I guess probably there's places you can be on the beach naked in West Germany and East Germany, but mm -hmm. I don't know, it was a bit of a thing in East Germany. It's probably the only freedom they had was mm -hmm. to go naked on the beach. Because they had so many constraints in their life, yeah? Mm. So earlier you told me about your big dog. What what else is new? What kind of work do you do or your interests? Are you studying or what, what are you doing? Got three children and a dog. <laughs> I uh, he's my my only kid. What? <laughs> he's my only kid, my dog. Your dog is your kid. Yeah, sort okay. no. I think I treat him probably like a kid. Like a kid, yeah. Okay. I um I work as a caretaker for disabled people, uh, so I don't have the nine to five job that I used to many years ago. Um, that's also why I have the, the freedom to take time off and travel because I work 24 hours uh, shifts, um, which is do you Something think your like dog would like to transform along with you? Transform? Yeah, because you told me earlier, we had quite a good chat, you know, you probably don't remember, but you told me that you would come here for mm -hmm. a whole week, mm -hmm. but you didn't know what to do with your dog. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, so in two weeks' time mm -hmm. in Spain, at our house in Spain, mm -hmm. which is even more beautiful than this one, mm -hmm. We're going to have a, a weekend like this. Well, no, no, we're going to have a celebration weekend, actually. So we're having a totally free uh, celebration weekend in this house, in that house, with uh, workshops and like, it'll be a concert. It'll be a lot of fun, actually. We do it every year in this house. And then on that, that the next week, Monday to Friday, we're doing the same transformation week as mm -hmm. we're doing here. Spain, okay. Because 
we have bought the house. The house in Spain now is, belongs to the community. And so for the last two or three years, we've been renovating it. And now it's kind of ready. So we're actually advertising that we're going to create a new international community there. And we could be happy, we'll look after your dog for you there. Okay. He will like so it very much. We have a big garden, he can run around. Thank you so much. <laughs> How lovely. Thank you. So if you really want that possibility to find out what it means to transform, mm -hmm. that's a lovely week. Mm. Okay, yeah. And you can talk to some people about that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, something else I would say about this woman, I won't say it to her, but I'll say it to you. Do you see that she's kind of nice? Do you see that she's got an open heart and she smiles nicely? So she's exactly the person that looks after old people or invalid people or people who need a supporter, you see? Those, in that kind of situation, it attracts a certain kind of people. And she's one of these people. You see this? I can see it, but I think you can see it. Huh? I'm not saying she's special or anything, but there is a tendency for people that do that kind of work to be affected, and their heart then opens, and, uh, oh, I must tell you about this. Oh, on YouTube the other day, there was this amazing moment. So there was, they have this, what do they call it? Um, it's a sort of talent show where you can go and sing or something, you know? Anyway, there was this little old lady, and she had a big man with her, younger, much younger. She was, it turned out, she was 80, and he was, I don't know, they never told us, but he looked about 40, I would guess, or 35, something. Much taller than this little old lady, right? Anyway, they started dancing, right, together. And their dance was so terrible that after two minutes, the boss of this talent show did the buzzer, you know, kind of, please leave now, buzzer. And then he did it, and then they just carried on dancing, right? And then suddenly they changed, and suddenly this big guy was throwing this woman over her shoulder, under her his legs, and this 80-year-old lady was dancing like a teenager. And everybody was clapping, going wild, and it was like this fantastic thing. And this little old 80-year-old lady, she's just lovely, completely amazing, you see. But that doesn't happen very often, because most people, little old ladies, when they get to 80, they're not, you know, being thrown around in t on a television show. <laughs> I was so touched, you know, it was so lovely, God, amazing. And then uh, if you watch those talent shows, you get little girls coming and singing, you know, like six years old or maybe uh, ten years old coming on this stage in a huge theatre and they stand there, you know, and you think, oh, poor little girl, can she handle this, you know? And then she starts singing and then you find there's an angel there, you know? And everybody's clapping like crazy, and this little girl is, wow, the greatest moment of her life. You know? Oh, we're almost finishing. Well, I'm already on overtime tonight. You know? Anything else we should talk about? I'm excited to... Feel my essence. Yeah, one thing I'd like to say. So, seeing if you're doing the Vipassana weekend, and you're what's going to happen is, in, in about an hour, you'll be sitting on your bed, which we call the island, and you get a chair and a cushion and a backtrack if you want to sit on the floor. So you've got all the equipment, and that's your island for from about uh, 11 o'clock tonight until about 5 o'clock or four, 4 or 5 o'clock on Sunday, right? And all that time you're blindfolded on your island, so you don't see anything. You energetically can feel the other people in the room, because there are, I think, 12 people in this room, yeah? 
and uh, maybe somebody snores, somebody laughs, so you know there's a bit of interaction, but mostly you've got your blindfold on, and you're basically looking inside. Then you want to pee because you would like to escape from looking inside, so you, oh, and you put your hand up, and then we, we take you with your blindfold on to the toilet. So, and we take you back, and then at the right moment we bring you some simple food, with your blindfold on, you eat it, you just taste it, you don't see it, you don't know what you're eating, but you're, you know. So for two days, you're completely trusting life. Little taste or touching, trusting life. And this is very powerful, actually. So it's not only that you're blindfolded and you're looking inside that's very kind of touching, but you're also going to be looked after by the people. So there will always, even in the middle of the night, there will always be at least one person sitting in the room to take care of you. If you need water, you need the toilet, if you need some emotional release, or you know, it's all getting too much, then you can put your arm up and somebody will come and care, even in the middle of the night. You know? So that is actually very touching. You know? It's very touching to experience two days where you're completely cared. You've probably never done that since you were a baby. Probably when you were a baby, your mother did that to you, but probably now, since many years, you never had that experience again. So you'll find this very, very beautiful because you can actually start to trust in a new way, maybe. The other thing I really, really want to tell you is it's also possible that after maybe some hours or maybe a day, you start to get very strong stuff going on in your head. And it all feels like too much. What am I doing sitting here having these horrible thoughts? I'm going to leave. So you want to rip off your blindfold and leave, run out of the door. So that is a very important moment. Don't do it. Whatever it is, just stay there. It will change. And it could exactly be the moment that later you realize was the moment when it all changed and it started to be wonderful. So this moment, this strong moment, when you feel, I can't stand it anymore, I must go, is exactly what you probably do in your normal life, you see? When there is something going on with somebody and it's all too much, you run away. You, you just say, oh, I can't deal with that. And, you know? So in this sitting in the, in the, in the Vipassana, it could be that things like that will come up inside you, you see? And there is a big temptation to say, it's enough, I go. Don't go, please, for you. Not for me, you can go, I don't mind, you know, but you know, try to stay there because very often people report that later on when they look back, they see that that was a very important moment, but by deciding to stay with whatever the thing is, it's kind of completely changed by itself, like magic. And that is a very beautiful experience, actually. And this can kind of a bit empower you with the idea that you can do this inner journey. Because now you're about to do the inner journey for two days. So this moment when you, you know, it's all too much, is actually very important and beautiful. I mean, we don't have many people that actually leave, but you could come to that moment. And then you put your hand up, somebody, Indira will come and whisper sweet things in your ear, and hopefully you'll stay a bit longer. I don't think you'll come to that point, though. Because <laughs> you've already done some work on all this, you know? So you kind of a bit already, it feels to me like you already a bit know yourself. But if you don't really know yourself, and then you start sitting, just looking inside with a blindfold, it's quite possible that you can get to a moment when you can't really manage it, because you've never really done something like that. You'll be okay, don't worry. And after you've gone through that sort of moment, something happens inside, you know, and you start to feel a lot more trust in life, I think. Life's pretty good, isn't it? She's got a dog, you know, she loves it.
<laughs> There's a lot of, lo of love. I know, I know, I know. I know a bit about dogs. The trouble with dogs is, like you discovered, they're lovely, but if you want to travel or what, you know, then it gets a bit more complicated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It does. Yeah, that's definitely part of the um, the restraint that I'm feeling right now uh, mm. the, in the time of my life because I'm trying to figure out where to where to be <laughs> where to be where to or be? who should be I think both and so I've decided I that the I think the most important place to live first is to with it is within yeah right I'm trying to force these thoughts on where to be physically in the world, which country, which city. You don't have to worry much about that. You just, just if you keep doing this inner thing, it's amazing what starts to happen, yeah. you see, because maybe the things you, that you need to carry on with the journey start to happen. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I believe that. I mean... I could say that, you know, if you start with meditation, you see a lot of you come now to do meditation. Meditation is a good beginning or yoga is a good beginning. It's not actually very exciting, but it's a good beginning. You will find that out of your meditation comes a very important question. Well, a few important questions, but one of the important questions will be, what the fuck am I doing on this planet? Do you anybody know? What am I fucking doing here? Am I just paying the phone bill? Am I just getting rich? I mean, what the fuck am I doing here? What am I supposed to do here? What do I want to do here? So this becomes a very strong question, actually. And the other very strong question is, who the fuck am I? Who the fuck am I? He's famous for a question. Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> He didn't have the fuck, that's me. I added that. But, you know, who am I? You see, does anybody here know who the fuck they are? You see? So this, these two questions, like what the fuck am I doing and who the fuck am I? These are two very fundamental questions which normally we never ask. Maybe you, you spend every day asking that, but probably you never ask that, you see? Now I've given you these two questions, you're going to have to now sit there with your blindfold on asking yourself these questions and see if you've got any answer, you see. And when you discover you don't know any answer, then what? I tell you what, then you need not, you don't need John David particularly, but you need somebody like John David who, who knows some of those answers, who can guide you along, you see. So at a certain point in this inner work or inner journey, you find that you somehow come across a teacher. In my case, I was, uh, I think I was about 30, living in Tokyo, where I had a job in an architect's office and teaching English in the evenings. I didn't really know what I was going to do with my life at that point because uh, I was sort of in limbo, you know, this all doesn't make me so happy. I want something more nourishing, something like this. I had kind of fun in Tokyo, although it's a pretty tough place. And then I was introduced suddenly. I was given the chance. I went to meet somebody who was a German man living in Kyoto with his Japanese wife. And he had a, a, a master. He had Osho as his master. I went to see him to talk about architecture, and he introduced me to Osho. And I told him, I'm not interested in Osho. I didn't actually tell him that. I was a very polite English guy. I didn't tell him I'm not interested. But my mind told me, oh, I'm not interested. One year later, I was in Osho's ashram in India. And then my whole life changed, you see. So the reality is, that although you think you're busy doing your life, you're not. It's scary, but actually life is happening to you. 
Wow, I'm sorry to tell you that. It's not all your fun now. You see, you think you're doing in life, but while you think you're doing in life, your life is happening. And it happens out of this intelligent, divine universe. lovely, pretty lovely actually. But it requires some kind of trust. Most of us only trust our mind. So you only trust all the bullshit. All this stuff is bullshit. The only thing that's real is right now. Well, it's already gone. The past. Gone, finished. Only now. It's very difficult to live always in the now, you see. Extremely difficult. We're constantly pulled into the past. And you're going to have now two days to experience what I'm saying. You know, most of the time sitting there, you'll be in the past. So the good thing will be if somebody starts snoring, you see. Because if somebody starts snoring, you're going, oh, God, somebody's snoring. Oh, God, I can't sleep. You know, he's snoring. Oh, God, horrible. Blah. But the snoring will bring you present. You are probably dreaming about, you know, something. And suddenly this guy who's, or well, girl it could be, snoring is going to bring you, ah, ah, you're right here now with the snoring. And in the courtyard, we have birds. So in the morning, uh, fairly early, you'll start hearing birds singing, see? So that's a bit nicer. That will also bring you here now, because when you start hearing the birds sing, that will help you to become now. Okay, good to meet you. Good luck. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, if there's somebody here who couldn't stay for the whole week and, you know, all my craziness is kind of inspiring you in some way, when, what, the dates? When do we start? 22nd of November. It goes until the 3rd of December. So there's a weekend completely free. Um, then there's a one week which costs you 90 euros for food. That's all. So you can have 10 days in Spain in a beautiful place for 90 euros plus the air ticket. And we live between two big tourist airports. So there's lots of cheap flights. So I'm sure you didn't come here to fly to Spain, but there you are. You see, now suddenly you could fly to Spain. And you might end up living in this big international, new international community. You never thought of that, did you? You can even bring your dog. Uh -huh. Doesn't know where she's going to live soon, and she might end up in the, in the community in Spain, you see. I'm very old. You can look after me if you like. <laughs> How old do you have to be to get in your... <laughs> So it's getting a bit, a bit late, you know. I think we'll have to stop now. And this is, anybody really wants to come here? Last chance? If you want to come, you better come, because otherwise you'll sit for two days and say, oh, I wish I would have talked to him. <laughs> <clears throat> and what's your name? My name is Joachim. Who? Joachim. Welcome. Is that German name? No, Belgian. Belgian. Oh God! You come from Belgium? Yeah. Oh, which bit? <laughs> it's one of the most boring countries. I'm I sorry. <laughs> I used to go and give meetings in Belgium, actually, in Antwerp. There was, yeah. I used to go to Antwerp. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is boring. Why is it so boring, actually? But I think the same of Germany, actually. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. I'm not sure <laughs> which one is more boring. But... <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, 
I'm pretty happy actually living my life. The only thing that I'm missing is um, the like-minded people around me. So I managed to get out of the system. I live in nature. I get money to live from without doing a job. The government gives you money? No. I, I, when I was young, I saw old people, people working and I thought I will never be like that. So I saved all my money. I bought two houses. I live in half of one and I rent the other one out and I rent half of mine out. So I live off that and I do some investing. And now I can dance in my living room and play music, but I miss people. So um, that's right. why I'm here. And how long does it take from where you live to come here? Two hours. Nothing. You know, when I was interested, I had to fly from London to um, India. You know? mm -hmm. Two hours, nothing. Huh? No, no, I know. So, yeah, I'm is interested in um, this community and also the one in Spain. But who is managing the community in Spain? Maybe you. <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> I mean, actually, yeah. I should tell you a bit of a secret. You know, if you have some interest to get involved with us, we're not very good at managing anything. You know? <laughs> Basically, if you get to know our community, you discover it's a total chaos, you see. But this chaos works very strongly, actually. You know? Yeah, I know some communities that don't work, so I don't, that I want it kind of working. I mean, this community really, really works because we've yeah. been together for 22 years. Yeah, this is a, a fucking time. miracle by itself. <laughs> you, you know, I must like you a lot because I keep saying fucking, and it's great. Huh? <laughs> I'm usually a bit uptight, you know, I've got to be a spiritual teacher tonight. You know? Yeah, but, uh, yeah. So basically, we've actually, uh, was it, I think, three or four years ago, we bought this house. It's mm -hmm. an extremely nice place. It's three minutes from the Mediterranean. It's in a nice little town. If you want to know where we are, if you look on the map of Spain, it has a nose, and we're in the nose. And um, yeah, it's a nice little town, and it's exactly between Valencia and Alicante, two big cities, so they have airports. Yeah. They have very cheap flights because of the tourists, a lot of tourists. And um, where we're living is a very quiet place, so it's a kind of holiday how can I say, lots of holiday homes, mm -hmm. and therefore in July and August it's pretty busy, but the rest of the year it's completely quiet. Yeah. So it's a super nice place for our kind of community. And now we've renovated it. So we have, for example, um, there were big balconies and we've added rooms, extra rooms on the balconies. Mm -hmm. And we have five yurts, if you know what Mongolian yurts are. Uh, we've got five of them in the garden. They're very popular. We have a guest yeah. house and they're very popular, these yurts, because we had the great idea. You, we had the yurt and we built a bathroom for each yurt. So we built a wall and in the wall there's trees and plants and so you go out for a shower and you're in the, in the, in the fresh air, you know, and in Spain they have a lot of fresh air there and they have even sun in Spain, you know, it's pretty nice. <laughs> And so people really love these yurts because it's very nice having a bath or you know, shower mm -hmm. in the. In the you know. So we've made a very beautiful place, and now is the right moment. We want to open it up to people who would like to create a new community, and then, of course, part of the new community we will be managing it. So we don't know who's going to do that, but you know. Yeah, that's why I'm asking because you are here, and. Um, uh, well, we go backwards and forwards a lot. Okay. You know? yeah. 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 But I'm very old, so I'm preparing for when I won't be around anymore. Which, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Sign him up. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, this is what's very lovely, you see. 
This is the beauty of humanity, that when the, the right thing shows up in your life, you get touched, then you take a step, you know, or you go to sleep. Most of humanity is asleep, but, you know, the people here are probably most of you are not asleep. Yeah, and it is right on the right moment now that I, I don't have to pay the houses anymore. I have the freedom. I looked on the internet. I came here and I thought, that's it. I have to be there. So I just booked this week to get involved. And are you here for the whole week? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. And yeah, get to know the Well, community. I need to warn you. you know. Sorry? I, I want to warn you that okay. at the end of next week, you'll find it very difficult to go back to Belgium. Yeah. Just remember that. But it won't be bad, you know, but it will, many people come here. I mean, we've got two or three people sitting here, actually, who came here for that week. And they're still living here six months later. Maybe I should get them to come and say hello. What? Six years later. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, these kind of things, they just happen, you see. You don't have to really think about it. In fact, it's better not to think about it. But this thing yeah. comes, you know, you feel this energy inside. And if you're a person that trusts life enough, you recognize that this thing you're feeling inside is actually a sort of inner message, you know, which you can say yes to or not. It took a long time to trust it, but now I recognize yeah. when it comes. Right, right, right. Good. Yeah. And Jira already told me actually about you. She only needed to talk to you on the phone for five minutes and she mm -hmm. told me you're a good guy. You see, this is all very... The thing is, we don't realize that life is all happening in a very natural, organic kind of way, you see. And once you realize that you don't have to think about your life, because it's all happening out of this divine wisdom, that's fantastic. If you start thinking, it's gone. Yeah, as soon as you think, it's gone, yeah. And the, the regular community, the regular society, I mean, they, they would be shocked to hear the kind of bullshit I'm talking tonight. They think I'm fucking crazy. Maybe I am. Be careful. You better check me out a bit. I could be telling you all kind of crazy stuff. Check me out. Check me out. You'll check somebody else out. But I've been doing this for 30 years, sharing, I mean. Before that, I was doing my own stuff for 20 years. And during this next week, we'll show you a film which includes a bit about my life, so you get to know more about me. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice week. Thank you. Okay, so enough. 11 o'clock. So now you go on your island, or do you want to come and talk to them? You want to come and talk to them a bit about the island weekend, or? You started already. I started already. Oh, do you want to t t tell some? You're going to meet them in the room, maybe. Yeah? Do it in the room. Okay. Okay, so when you go to the room, uh, she will come and give you a little bit of practical stuff. Okay. But the beauty of this weekend is it's extremely simple. You just sit on your island, or lie on your island, or stand on your island. But there are huge sharks. You can't go off your island. <laughs> Okay, so I enjoyed myself. Thank you. Thank you.